Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service. I'm so glad you guys can join us. Before we begin, let's open up in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Good morning, God. Today is the last Sunday of 2021. There have been many ups and downs this year. So much for us to be thankful for and so much that we'll, we still need to pray for. The COVID pandemic that crippled the world is still here. Not as bad as it was before, but still making a lot of people sick. We are so thankful that things are better. We are able to go out and meet people again. But we also continue to pray for healing for those who are sick. We pray for the end of this pandemic. And as we come to an end of 2021, May all the hardships and tragedies of 2021 be left behind. And may we look forward with hope to what is ahead in 2022. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's recite the Apostles' Creed in one voice. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, today's scripture reading is Luke chapter 2, verse 22 to 32. Let's read it together. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Holy Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. This is the word of God. Well, I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you enjoyed opening your presents and celebrating Christmas with your family. Um, even though our Christmas day has passed, the spirit of Christmas isn't over. Uh, the spirit of Christmas is something that stays with us all year long. We just celebrate it bigger on Christmas Day. Uh, so our today's story, um, we are going to look at a story of Jesus that happened shortly after his birth. So right after Christmas. Um, so let's jump right in. Okay. When Jesus was eight days old, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to God's temple. Because it was a Jewish tradition for baby boys to be purified and dedicated to God. There was a man named Simeon who loved God with his whole heart. He prayed for Israel and worshipped God every day. Simeon knew God promised to send a Messiah, someone who would free Israel. He prayed every day that God would send the Messiah soon. As he prayed, the Holy Spirit told him that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. One day, he felt the Holy Spirit tell him, Go. So he went to the temple courts. That just happened to be the day that Joseph and Mary, with Jesus, arrived at the temple for Jesus' purification and dedication. Simeon recognized Jesus right away. He knew this was the Messiah God had promised. He held Jesus in his arms and praised God. This was the Messiah he prayed for every day of his life. 
And just as God promised, he was able to see the Messiah with his own eyes before he died. Simeon told Mary what Jesus would do. She didn't understand what he said, but she listened and she remembered it. There was also a prophet named Anna at the temple. She was a very old woman who lived at the temple and worshipped God day and night, praying and fasting. She went over to where Jesus was and gave thanks to God. Then she told everyone there all about Jesus, the Messiah. All throughout Advent and Christmas uh, service yesterday, we've been talking about the different things in, in this world that kind of remind us of Jesus, right? Uh, we, we read over his, his story, the story of Jesus' birth, but we also looked at things in nature, things in the world around us. The first week we talked about the candy cane and how when the candy cane was created, it was created to share the story of Jesus. We looked at the, um, what is it, the sand dollar, right? And this was created by God. But if we really examine it closely, it also has the story of Jesus. And then we looked at the Christmas tree lights and how that was a reminder of God's glory. And then yesterday we talked about, um, am I forgetting something? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Yesterday, we talked about the light, the star in the night that led the wise men um, to where Jesus was. And all those things, everything that we go over, um, where we went over during Advent and yesterday at the Christmas service, they all point to Jesus, right? He's the main point. But unlike everything else, unlike the presents that we see, unlike the day, the Christmas tree and the Christmas lights and the Christmas Day celebrations, those things all come to an end after Christmas. Now it's it's over, right? But with Jesus, it's never over. It's It continues even after Christmas, right? In our story today, Jesus' birth came and went. The angels singing to the shepherds came and went. The shepherds came to worship and they went. <laughs> the wise men came, they went. Everything has come to an end in regards to Jesus' birth. But Jesus being the Messiah, Jesus being the Savior, that's not finished. Far from being finished. In today's story, uh, there are two people, right? There is Simeon and the prophet Anna. And both of them are very righteous people. Both of them love God with all of their heart. They worship God. They praise God. You know, they read the scriptures every day. They examine the scriptures. And they know all the promises that Jesus gave them or that God gave them, including the promise to send a Messiah. And you see, even, even though Christmas had passed, <laughs> they didn't call it Christmas yet, but even though Christmas had passed, the promise was still there. And they were able to rejoice in that promise. When Simeon and Anna both saw Jesus, what was their response? What was their response to Jesus? He was there in the flesh as a baby. He wasn't powerful yet. You know, he couldn't even walk. He couldn't, you know, go to the bathroom by himself. He couldn't feed himself. He couldn't do anything yet. He was a baby. But when they both saw Jesus, what was their response? Very similar to the shepherds and very similar to the magi, right? They worshipped. They praised God. They gave thanks to God and they worshipped. When we receive Jesus, what is our worship? What is, uh, I'm sorry, what is our response? Okay. Is our response to worship? Because Jesus is the same kind of gift to us as it was to them. Let me see if I can make that make sense a little better. Um, so the Magi, we talked about the Magi yesterday. They follow the star, right, to where Jesus lay. And he was, he was a baby. He couldn't do anything. Um, they didn't know anything about the Israelite history. They didn't know about God's promises. All they knew was there was a star that appeared. There's great big light 
and they knew that this great big light meant that this was a very important person, somebody who was worthy to be worshipped, somebody who was worthy to be honored. And so they went and they worshipped and they honored. The shepherds who were in the field, when the angels came, appeared and told them the Messiah is here, they ran to that uh, the, the barn. They ran to the manor, to the manger where Jesus was laying, and they gave him worship. They didn't question. They didn't look at him and think, this baby, are you sure this baby is the Messiah? I don't know. I, I think I'll wait and see. No, they didn't do that. They, or they weren't like, yeah, oh, good. Okay, I see him. That's the Messiah. Okay, all right, bye. You know, it, it, they didn't just pass over it. They worshiped. It was special. In today's story with Simeon and Anna, same thing. When they saw Jesus, they didn't just say, Oh, finally, the Messiah is here. Okay, let's get on with it now. They didn't just pass over it like a, a normal thing happening. They rejoiced. They thanked God for it. In fact, Simeon even said, Oh, I can die now. I've seen the Messiah. I don't have to live anymore. Everything I hoped for, everything I was waiting for, I see it now. That's how they felt. They were so awed. They felt so much uh, joy. And they were so just overwhelmed with emotion, with love, with peace, with hope, with everything that Jesus offered. Um, you know, that their first initial response was to worship. To say, praise God. Thank you, God. And so I ask you, <laughs> what, is, what is your response? When you see Jesus, when we come to worship and we think, ah, oh, this is Jesus. God, who was born for us, who lived for us, who died for us, who is in heaven waiting for us. When we come to see Jesus, do we respond in worship too? So this, this week, it's the last Sunday of 2021. I would like us to think back to the whole year, starting from January up until now. I know it's kind of hard to do to remember the whole entire year, but I want you to try to think back the whole year. Reflect. How much of that time was given to worshiping God? How much of your life, of your heart, did you offer to God? Or how much of your life and your heart did you keep away from God? Did you separate from God? I want you to think about that. Okay. And today, as we pray, um, I'm going to ask you, one, in your own words, okay, even though I'm praying, I want you to pray along. And in your own words, I want you to give thanks to God for all the good things that happened this year. Okay? Uh, for all the blessings that he's given us, or given you. And then two, uh, I want you to think about where, where you think you may have fallen short. Now, what I mean by that is if you feel that you did not pray as much as you could have, uh, that you did not give thanks to God when good things happened, um, if you did not ask God for help when you were in trouble, uh, if you did something knowing that God would not be happy, if you sinned knowing it was wrong, but you did it anyway for some reason, Okay. So if, if, if any of those things happen during the year in your life, in your heart, I'm going to ask you guys to pray because we don't want to take those, those things into 2022 with us. We want to leave them behind. So I want you to pray and ask God to forgive you, to forgive you of those sins, to forgive you for not um, giving thanks to him, not being thankful, uh, to forgive to forgive you for being selfish or prideful or um, not getting along with people 
for disobeying your parents, for fighting with your siblings, uh, for being lazy, whatever it is, uh, whatever it is that you think uh, you need to clear between you and God, I want you to take a moment and pray about that, okay? All right, so we are going to go into a time of prayer, okay? So think about those things. I'm going to give you guys like a minute to think about it, okay? So think about it and then we will go into prayer. All right, let's pray. Dear God, as we end 2021, we are taking a moment to look back. First, we want to give you thanks for all your blessings, for all the times you protected us from harm, for all the times you gave us everything we needed, for the times of laughter with friends and family, for being able to go back to school, play sports, and eat out, for healing when we were sick, comfort when we were sad, for being there with us when we felt lonely. We give you thanks. Secondly, as we look back, there are things we know we did wrong. We ask you for forgiveness. Forgive us for being selfish, prideful, angry, and unforgiving, for not caring about others, for not thinking about or spending much time with you, for all the negative thoughts we held on to. We don't want to hold on to our sins any longer. We don't want to take them with us into the new year. So we ask you to wash us clean with the blood of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, announcements. Uh, just one announcement. That's this Friday because this Friday is New Year's Eve. Um, we will probably have a New Year's Eve worship service late at night. So there will be no Friday night Bible study. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed week. Bye.